but it's still a lot of work there. Um, okay, so this. So, um, it investigates the global ecological crisis through the intersection of literature, culture, and the physical environment. Ecocritism originated as an idea called literary ecology. I was later coined as an ism, okay, a belief by Rukat. So it was uh, the term originally came from Mika, Joseph Mika, who came up with literary ecology. So it shows the emphasis in between literature and ecology, the environment. Ecocritism expanded as a widely used literary and cultural theory by the early 1990s with the form formation of the Association for the Study of Literature and Environment at the Western Literary Association. For, this is followed by the launch of the flagship journal ISLA, uh, Introductory Studies in Literature and Environment in 1993, and then later the publication of the Ecocritism Reader. So the, this word ecocriticism reader is very important because it has many important publications on ecocriticism and you can find it for free at PDF Drive. So waves of ecocriticism. Ecocriticism has been divided into three waves to historicize the movement in a clear trajectory. The first wave of ecocriticism, like feminism, we have first wave, second wave, third wave. So it, it's the same with ecocriticism. We have the first wave, second wave, and third wave. So ecocriticism tended to take a dehistoricized de approach to nature, often overlooking more political and theoretical dimensions and tending towards a celebratory approach of wilderness and nature writing. Uh, the examples, examples of works that can be analyzed using the first wave yeah, is by looking at Henry David, David Thoreau's Walden and William Wordsworth's poems. Okay? So these works um, are about nature. Yeah? They are not about politics, they're not about pollution and all that. They're about appreciating nature. So the second wave expanded to offer the second wave of, happened after from 1993 until 2000. Yeah. Um, the second wave expanded to offer new ways of approaching literary analysis by, for example, theorizing and deconstructing human centered scholarship in eco studies, imperialism and ecological degradation, agency for animals and plants, gender and race as ecological concepts and problems of scale. Okay, so. Uh, it focuses on environmental devastation. I'm sorry about the if they are um, what do you call that uh, spelling 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 problems here. So um, in the second wave, it is theorizes about human centered scholarship in eco studies. Uh, it destroys this idea of human centered. Um, scholarship in eco studies. It looks at problems brought about by pollution. Uh, ecological degradation, this is pollution, uh, imperialism, when you feel like you want to conquer the world, you know, conquer nature, you want to explore nature and all that, why do we have that feeling? Eh? Because it's not really good to actually explore everything. Um, we, can, we should leave the forest, for example, to animals. Eh? So, uh, it also looks at gender and race, you know, because um, the forest, for example, has long been associated with uh, feminine figures um, and femininity. We always say that the uh, mother nature, for example. Yeah? So nature is like a woman; it's a mother. Yeah. So there are uh, uh, what do you call that overlappings between uh, feminism and ecological studies or ecocriticism, because we always portray uh, nature as being uh, feminine. Okay. okay, so in the third wave, uh, it advocates for a global understanding of eco-critical practice through issues like global warming. It combines elements from the first and second wave but aims to move beyond Anglo-American prominence. So, um, right now, people are talking about um, climate change. Okay, so climate change is a major issue in our age. Okay, right now, because our 
uh, Earth has increased in terms of temperature um, to about one Celsius. Okay, previously, uh, before this age, uh, before what do you call that, before 1950s, uh, um, our uh, Earth temperature had been the same, basically. And it's not before 1950s, I'm sorry, before 2010. 2010, our Earth temperature had been the same, okay? But somehow after 2010, our Earth temperature had, um, what do you call it, increased to 1 Celsius. Within 10 years, it had increased to 1 Celsius. And this well, increase is okay uh, if it had happened within 50 years or 100 years. Not, not 50 years, but 100 years. But right now, 10, one Celsius increase is happening within 10 years. So they are fearful that the Earth temperature will destroy the icebergs in North Pole and also South Pole. And it has done that already. Yeah? The, the icebergs have melted yeah? in the North Pole and South Pole, and the water level has increased. Okay, So it is probable that uh, most of our countries that are near water, most of the countries near water, like Malaysia, for example, or Singapore, you know, we will uh, have many places that are below sea water level, okay? So when that happens, we cannot live in our, uh, in, in these spaces anymore. We have to go inland to higher lands, uh, okay? So, and some places like maybe um, certain islands uh, in the Pacific, for example, they will be completely submerged underwater so right now they are looking at alternatives so one reason for this increase of temperature is the um, greenhouse emission of gas uh, from our or carbon dioxide from our vehicles huh? so it has caused a lot of um, problems right now we are moving to hybrid cars and renewable energy to reduce our carbon um, dioxide um, output okay so this is some of the the things uh, in this age uh, where we have to deal with uh, problems of ecology as well so joseph Mika in 1972 published the comedy of survival it's an it's a book that argued comedy and tragedy as ecological concepts connects the tree and environmental studies as a cohesive field of study as an Ethnologist and comparative literature scholar, Mika helped to pioneer the critical discussion of ecocritism in what he called um, literary ecologies. Okay. So he was interested in literature and also in in, um, in the environment. Huh? So he came up with this literary ecologies. So William Rukat, who published Literature and Ecology in 1978, actually coined the term ecocritism. He argued for a way to find the grounds upon which the two communities, the human and the natural, can coexist, cooperate and flourish in the biosphere. So this is um, the reason, eh, because we want to find an, uh, a way to coexist. Yeah, with other creations. Ecocritism as a literary and cultural theory significantly expanded in 1990s, paralleling other forms of literary and cultural theory, such as postcolonialism and critical race studies. And uh, so this is a new theory yeah, with other new theories like postcolonialism and critical race studies, largely due to the publication of Sherry Broad Pelty and Harold Fromm. Uh, book which is the eco criticism reader. Eco critics ask questions such as how is nature represented in a piece of literature? What role does the physical setting play in the plot of this novel? Are the values expressed in this play consistent with ecological wisdom? How do our metaphors of the land influence the way we treat it? In addition to race, class, and gender, should place become a new critical category? Do men write differently about nature than women? Uh, how has the concept of wilderness changed over time? In what way is the environmental crisis seeping into contemporary literature and popular culture? So it focuses on nature and how it appears in um, literature. 
Ecofeminism. As a branch of ecofeminism, ecofeminism primarily analyzes the interconnection of the oppression of women and nature. So in ecofeminism, because our families believe that they are being oppressed, yeah? they see the connection between oppression of nature um, and oppression of women. So they say that this because nature is, according to many feminists, is associated with femininity. The mother nature, for example, um, is the term that people use to signify and symbolize the powers of nature. So it draws parallels between the domination of land and the domination of men over women. Eco Eco-feminists examine this hierarchical gendered relationship in which the land is often equated with the feminine, seen as fertile resource and property of man. So they draw connection between how uh, men destroy nature and how men destroy uh, women in that sense. Huh? Uh, femininity, the, the, how they degrade femininity. Okay. So there are two camps of ecofeminist schools. The first referred to as radical ecofeminism uh, reverses the patriarchal domination of men over women and nature, exalting nature, the non-human and the emotional. This approach embraces the idea that women are inherently closer to nature, biologically, spiritually and emotionally. So the first school, radical ecofeminism, it supports um, women's um, power over men because uh, women are uh, according to them closer to nature so when they exalt nature uh, um, they they say that nature is better than civilization they are paying attention to how women are better than men um, and the second camp which followed the first historically but maintained that there is no such thing as feminine essence that would make women more likely to connect with nature. But the second same thing is that there is no such thing as feminine essence. So this is more, more post-structuralist. The, the second wave feminist engagement with technology has been characterized by the eco-feminist use of the ancient identity of nature as a nurturing mother, which shows the deep alliance between the feminist and the ecological um, the ecology. So, in the second wave feminist uh, engagement, uh, we, we see uh, a reaction against technology. Uh, the second wave feminists believe that women are better because they are, uh, they represent nature and men represent technology and therefore nature is better than technology in that way. Um, they use the ancient identity of nature as nurturing mother. They, sh they emphasize how women are connected to nature. And Oko feminists argue that uncontrolled growth associated with capitalism, technology, and progress has sanctioned the domination of both nature and women. And eco feminists assert that political importance of reclaiming both the natural and the female maternal from the grips of an exploitative scientific patriarchalism. Okay. So they think they want to reclaim, they want to show the connection between nature and women uh, very strongly as opposed to um, as opposed to science sciences. Huh? Women are more connected to nature than they are rather than the scientists, they say. Because science we, Oh, no, belongs to men. So nature as a mother, the ancient identity of nature as a nurturing mother links women's history and the history of the environment and ecological change. Both the women's movement and the ecological movement are sharply critical of the cause of competition, aggression and domination arising from the market economies, models of already in nature and society. The second camp which followed the first historically meant that there is no such thing as feminine essence. Okay, so again, basically the same thing here. Um, they they are against um, competition, aggression, and domination brought about by the economy that is controlled by men. Okay, and it's caused on women. So, uh, there are key concepts. The other theory we have key concepts. 
in um, post-colonialism, for example, we have the concept of the other, we have concept of race, and so on. So in uh, eco-criticism, we have anthropocentrism, which is the view that the interests of humans are a higher priority, are of higher priority than those of non-humans. And uh, an antonym, for biocentrism or ecocentrism. This is against ecocentrism, which is ecocentrism is the, it um, puts the priority on ecology, but anthropocentrism puts it on human beings. So it covers a multitude of possible positions from positive conviction, strong anthropocentrism, that human interest should prevail, to the belief that uh, zero degree anthropomorphism is not feasible or desirable. So this, uh, actually, even though it's the, um, it's the antonym or the opposite of anthropocentrism, ecocentrism also has uh, a strong anthropocentrism um, element in it because you know when we fight for the ecology, for example, in sustainable development, we tell others that it's because of human interest. We, we live in this world, so we have to take care of it. Huh? So um, in ecocentrism, we, we still have this anthropocentrism emphasis. But sometimes it is zero degree anthropocentrism when uh, we, some people also in ecocentrism, they believe that uh, the rights of animals, for example, in zoos, if animals attack uh, human beings who enter their cages, uh, some of these animals are killed. Okay, So they are angry with this. Uh, people who fight for our animal rights, for example, they are angry with this kind of um, action. So they have zero degree anthropocentrism. So ecocentrism has these two elements in it, huh? even though it supports the ecology. So most would argue that it's entirely possible without hypocrisy to maintain biocentric views in principle while recognizing that in practice must be constrained by, it must be constrained by anthropocentric considerations, whether as a matter of strategy or a matter of intractable self-interestedness. Okay. So uh, the other word, uh, the phrase that we use is best. Speciesism. Speciesism uh, is a direct upshot of anthropocentrism because it assumes that all other species of life are subordinate to the human. And you talk about all other creations as species. Non human life forms and non living components of nature are deemed to be lesser creation. They're considered lesser, lesser creation or lower. Uh, behind human creations. Eh? Uh, life forms that are ugly, strong, presumably, presumably threatening to humanity, or just different are depicted as monsters. They can be killed, mutilated, and displaced with impunity. So if you create, see other people, as, other life forms as species, uh, sometimes you can kill them, mutilate them, displace them. Okay, so it is not a favorable term. So what eco-critics do, they read major literary works from an ecocentric perspective with particular attention to the representation of the natural world, they extend the applicability of the range of ecocentric concepts using them on things other than the natural world, concepts such as growth and energy, balance and imbalance, symbiosis and maturity, sustainable and unsustainable uses of energy and resources. So they, they use this ecocentric concepts such as natural, um, such as growth and energy. What do you mean by growth and energy? Do they talk about that in their works? They talk about balance and imbalance, uh, symbiosis and mutuality, okay? Uh, sustainable and unsustainable. They give special emphasis to writers who foreground nature as a major part of their subject matter, such as the American transcendentalists and the British romantics. So the American transcendentalists and the, the British romantics are literary movements huh, that used to exist in the 19th century, which has uh, which pays a lot of attention to nature. So they extend the range of literary critical practice by placing a new emphasis on factual writing, topographical, such as essays, travel writings, memoirs, and regional literature. 
they turn away from the social constructivism and linguistic determinism of dominant literary theories and emphasize ecocentric values, collective ethical responsibility, and the claims of the world beyond ourselves. They turn away from social constructivism. They, they don't talk about social. Uh, remember when we were talking about feminism, we say that the, the genders are socially constructed. So they don't talk about social constructedness in this. Um, in this ism or in this eco criticism, they talk about um, whether we support ecocentric values for such as sustainable development and so on. So, also whether we support collective ethical responsibility towards nature and so on. Um, they include writings, several writings, memoirs, regional literature, because all of this involves nature. So there are phrases of nature often used, huh? often used in works of eco criticism. The wilderness, for example, when somebody talks about the wilderness, is uh, associated with desert, ocean, uninhabited continents. The scenic, the scenic sublime, uh, forests, lakes, mountains, cliffs, waterfalls, the countryside, hills, fields, woods, the domestic picturesque, parks, gardens, lanes, so on. So examples of the use of ecotism, you can look at this website here. Uh, I've given you the address on Italim and you can just look at it and there are many examples of the use of ecotism. So this is my example which is um, which came from A. R. Emmons poem, Garbage. Garbage has to be the poem of our time because garbage is spiritual, believable enough to get our attention, getting in the way, piling, up stinking, turning brooks and turning brook brownish and creamy white, what else deflects us from the errors of our illusionary ways. So it's looking at garbage and it's saying that this is, the, you know, we have allowed it to to appear to, to exist in our life. We don't really care about the environment anymore. Garbage is has become normal, the norm. Huh? We produce our garbage every day. We treat it as the norm. Uh, it doesn't bother us that we are polluting our world huh, with our garbage. So it's criticizing that. And then you have La Belle Dame Sans Mercy also, an example of ecofeminism, where uh, you have done English literature, romantic literature. I should have read, the, you could have read this poem. Eh? It is, um, it talks about a knight who goes into a um, forest and meets a fairy uh, who is who appears to be female and the fairy brings him to her elfin grot the place where she lives in and um you know and he kisses him and so on so he she he falls asleep and then uh, he dreams a, a very, very uh, frightful dream and he has a nightmare and then discovers that um, he has fallen under the spell of the lady who is an elfin, elf perhaps, a, a fairy elf, you know, a supernatural being but connected to nature and so on. So nature is, um, is given a, a very negative uh, connotation. It can make you um, lose sight of reality. So Shakespeare's The Tempest is another example where uh, we hear about um, uh, Miranda and her father who is actually drowned and shipwrecked. And it's not drowned but uh, he's, they're not drowned but they are shipwrecked and arrive at an island where the father um, consequently uh, colonized and then um, they uh, what do you call that they gain power over all the creations in on that island huh? so they become the new masters of the island of uh, nature in other words okay so uh, men in this play is seen to um, conquer nature the do use of magic. So Islam supports sustainable development. I don't really have a book um, that discusses this, but I think there are a few books in this uh, currently uh, being published that discuss about Islamic stuff. Uh, 
Islamic belief and eco criticism. Yeah, you can see that Islam also supports um taking care of our earth. Uh, we are the Khalifa, we are the vicegerents, um, and then we, it's our responsibility as uh, vicegerents of Allah SWT to take care of the rest of the creations. So, um, this is the work. Huh? So, anyone wants to ask me anything? Yeah, it's been a, a long while there. Um, anyone wants to ask me any, any question? By the way, do you have any question? Anyone has any question? Hmm? About ecocism, do you understand ecocism? Yeah? It's basically about taking care of our environment uh, and it looks at how People, it criticizes people's uh, act of polluting this world. Okay, so basically that, and then we have ecofeminism, which links women with nature. Uh, it doctor is greenwashing discuss. Greenwashing, what is greenwashing? I, I'm, I've never come across that word before. Let me. It is obviously new to me. Um, what is greenwashing? Let me have a look. And I think. Remotion is the process of conveying a false impression or providing misleading information about how a company products are more environmentally sound. For example, companies involved in greenwashing behavior might make claims that their products are from recycled materials or have energy saving. Obviously, it's not really, it's not covered. In eco criticism, but it could be. I don't. I'm, I'm not really a uh, what do you call that? An expert on eco criticism. It's just something new that UAE, for example, has um, undertaken. Right after Prof. Zul Kifli Abdul Razak eh, has become our rector. But uh, I'm not really. Uh, I've even. Uh, I have never come across this word before. So thank you for making this. Uh, who who did that? Who? Thank you, uh, Nur Anis. Yeah, thank you, Nur Anis, for uh, giving this comment. Yeah, but I'm not. I'm. I, I don't. I don't know this. Time. It could be. It could be. Uh, it could be uh, something new to explore because uh, when was this created? The definition was created. Uh, possibly quite new, also, right? Uh, yeah. So, you know, obviously when you talk about words, words and all that, you know, obviously you watch it isn't there because they're not even companies. But uh, who knows, maybe there have been books on this yeah? and how it is related to sustainable development. Yeah. Um, obviously, it's anti-sustainable development. Uh, there, there is definitely one word talk, talk about differentiating between sustainable and sellable. Okay. Uh, so, How to distinguish, and now the work talks about how to distinguish real sustainability from greenwashing. Okay, so yeah, it's definitely some people have been talking about this, but uh, as for eco criticism, I'm not really sure uh, whether it has appeared or not. So, anyone uh, wants to say anything? I want to say anything. Okay, uh, nobody. Yeah, okay, so maybe in the next class we will have, um, I will tell you before next class um, to sit for a test because we have another quiz, quiz 3 and 4, okay, but quiz 3 is going to be on modernism and postmodernism. no, no, I'm sorry, no, it's not going to be on modernism and postmodernism, it's going to be on um, 
uh, archetypal and uh, post-colonialism. Archetypal and post-colonialism. And then, oh yes, it couldn't be on that also. Yeah, it could be on that, archetypal and um, post-colonialism. Okay, and then the last quiz could be on modernism and postmodernism. So I think that can really know. Um, I think we could have also questions on the last two, um, studies or ecocritism and disability studies, also in the last quiz. So we have a combination of four theories in one quiz. Okay, or maybe I will I will inform you later about how, how what, what is the structure of this uh, three, two other quizzes, the last two other quizzes. Okay, so anyone wants to say anything before we say goodbye? Okay, so I will, I'm going to ask you to leave while, because I'm not, I want to talk to somebody in this uh, group. Okay, so can, I hope to see you next week. Yeah, um, so uh, I'm not going to say Merry Christmas. We don't celebrate Christmas, right? But have a have a holiday. Uh, have a nice holiday, and then coming weekend. Okay, thank you. Okay. Um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a nice holiday too. Thank you, Amanda. Um, for the rest of you, maybe you can leave also. Um, Uh, um, uh, Zafira, Ayuni Ali, and the rest, can you leave, please? Because I want to talk to somebody, but the, the person has left, I think. Ah, <laughs> oh, I'm going to pull out there.